Hi there, my name is Guy Dornsey, and this is the show called Change the World, when I like to invite guests onto short, into the Short Cable studio to talk about big, bold ideas, visions for the future, and stuff that makes us have a damn sight better world. And my guest today is Heather Kay. Hi, Thanks for joining us, who lives in Duncan, who's been worked with the Couch and Green community for over seven years, where you've managed several food security and agricultural programs, including Wild Food Walks, the Farm to School Lunch, and seven editions of the Direct Farm Marketing Guide called the Couch and the Farm Map, which we have at home, so I know how incredibly impressive it is. You're the supervisor of the Kin Park Youth Urban Farm Project, and most of all, involved in the development of the Couch and Valley Cooperative Marking Place, otherwise known as the Co-op. And co-op is not about cows, it's about the cow which and <laughs> valley and food. A co-op, so yeah. So I went sense. to the website to look at this <laughs> and I was like, oh wow, this is great. So tell other people what the cow and valley cooperative marketplace is, because I was pretty blown away. Yeah, so we started out as, we're a food processor and farmer cooperative, first and for foremost. Okay. Yes. So we uh, developed, we launched in about, um, it was the fall of 2014, as a cooperative. And we decided that our very first initiative or social enterprise would be an online marketplace oh, because right. we wanted to see, we wanted to address some of the issues that face uh, farmers and food processors in the region. And that could be um, lack of uh, facility to process or uh, mentorship for young farmers, all these issues. We had a long list of issues, but one yes. of them was marketing. And we wanted to do something that was really relevant and modern. And, you know, a lot of people buy things online these days. Yes. Well, why couldn't they buy fresh produce and locally grown foods right. online too? So, so I looked yeah. at the list of all the, your farm, Old MacDonald Farm, the 2035 Farm, the Eight yeah. and a Half Acres, the Bite Me, Bite Me Cookie Company, the Boots yeah. and Roots Permaculture Farm, the Cedar Grove Farm. There's pages of these yeah. farms, the Incubator yeah. Seed Farm, Hope Farm, Innisvale Farm, <laughs> Nandy Secret, Providence Farm, Rumley Farm, Muddy Feet Farm. Don't they have lovely names? They do, they do. The Silverside yeah. Farm and Winery, South Island Saskatoons. And they're all members of the cooperative, right? They are, yes. And they're all, all their food is then... I can go online and yeah. buy their food? So we have, in the cooperative itself, we have about 65 members. Not everyone sells through the market. Yes. It's, it, it's optional, it's not mandatory. We have probably about 35 active sellers within the marketplace. Okay. And so, yeah, people go online every week between uh, Friday and Tuesday. That's our order cycle. Yes. They place their order. They can choose from all these different farms. They can order you know, bacon from one and greens from another yeah. and eggs from another. And like, it's all put into their cart and they check out, and then that order is harvested fresh for them Wednesdays, and they pick it up Thursday. So the farms all do the harvesting on the Wednesdays. That's right. They, they take it to some central place? They do. We, uh, we just recently um, expanded into Victoria, and so as oh. a result of that expansion, we moved our aggregation point from Couch and Green Community's commercial kitchen to Lockwood Farms um, oh. in Cobble Hill. Okay. And they have, um, the reason being is that they have a much larger walk-in uh, cooler space right. and freezer space, and so we knew that we were going to expand, we needed to be able to yes. accommodate all these orders. So with your so, Victoria customers, how does the food get from the Cobble Hill space to Victoria? Yeah, so the reason that we were able to do this expansion was that the food was um, going to be at Cobble Hill. They have a uh, refrigerated truck, Lockwood Farms, that goes down to Victoria on Ooh. Thursdays, right. and they were willing to piggyback our stuff on their truck oh, and we thought well easy then that that solves that issue of transport so we were able to you know expand into Victoria knowing that we had not only the place to store the stuff yeah. um, when the farmers brought it in but a way a, a way to get it down to Victoria customers so when I looked at the, the shopping list online mm -hmm. I, 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 I couldn't begin to count how many <laughs> things were available yeah. every kind of every kind of vegetable and lots of other stuff. How many food items do you know the number? Oh gosh, it's I mean, in the there's, hundreds, right? yeah, there's so many and, and it's up to the, each farm to post what they have available every week. Yes. So it's a constantly changing. Of course, it's very seasonal. Yeah. So right now we have loads of greens and, and the strawberries, uh, strawberries are just coming. The garlic scapes that, you know, everyone snips their garlic yes. scapes. So people have been, um, and the, the first of the basil's coming. So it's really neat to see the, the products change and flow, ebb and flow as the season yes, right. goes on. So yeah, we have, Hundreds and, of and products how many right customers now. so far? Well, we have a pretty solid base in Duncan right now. We've got about 400 customers who are registered on the site. Now, that doesn't mean that they're placing orders every week. Uh, right. But um, that's another sort of convenience or, or, or beauty of our site is that there's no commitment on the customer's part. They yeah. can sign up and, and shop one week, but not the next. They don't have right. to lock into and a certain amount of time. How big is a typical order? Is it 30 bucks or 150? 
I would say the average order size is about forty dollars. People okay. are getting their, their because we have baking, and so people are ordering eggs, breads, veggies, mm -hmm. um, you know, a pie maybe, and so they're they're getting quite a robust order every week. Yeah. And as you know, the products increase, we find the orders increase too. So when there's the carrots and the cherry tomatoes and you know so all, you've all got, those things. you've got sufficient supply from. Your, yeah. You said 40 or so farmers? We've got about 35 okay. suppliers. suppliers, yeah, not all so fresh So they, they could farms, supply a lot more customers at the moment? They could, yeah. So we're, that's, that's why we knew going into Victoria we would need to know that we had a certain sort of level of supply. Yes. And, and we do have quite a few farms who are kind of, you know, when we're, as, as the market grows, they're yeah. ready to meet that and demand. And how, so. how do the farmers, because this is, I mean, I've been around a long time. This is a brand new way of selling farm fresh food. Yeah, it is, it is. How do the farmers find it? Well, the main thing that we're finding that, you know, when we first launched this, we didn't even think of it as being a real selling feature to the farmers, but they love the idea that everything that they're going to harvest on the Wednesday has been paid for. It's pre-ordered, it's yeah. prepaid. So when they go out into the field to harvest, they know that that head of lettuce has been sold. Yes. And to them, there's huge value in that. They're not having to go to stand at a stall. But well, when you go to market, and I just come from, we're at the, we're at the Beeman yeah. Road Market right now, yeah. you're taking stuff home sometimes, and sometimes you have more than you can eat yourself. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and sometimes the chickens do well. That's you know. right, exactly. And so they, they really see the value of that pre-harvest, mm. that pre-ordered yeah. system where they know what they're bringing and has, has, has been so that's, bought. The same applies if, if farmers are marketing through a brown box or through a community supported yes. agriculture. That's the same applies then, that they know that box is going to be that's under true, consumed. That's true. That's and, true. And, and that's another great system. Yes. Ours is a little bit different than that. The customer doesn't have to pay that upfront, make that upfront commitment to the farmer. Yeah. Um, and they can choose, pick and choose from, you know, 30 to 40 farms they're not, right. or, or processors. They're not locked into just one farm's yeah. product, which again, yeah. CSAs are a wonderful model. But let, me, let me go somewhere way <laughs> broader here. Um, how long have you lived in the Couch and Valley for? Uh, almost 10 years. 10 years, right. Yeah. What changes have you noticed around food and farming and stuff in that time? <laughs> Well, I would say that um, some of the things I've seen um, are the amount of new farmers coming to the valley. I'm, I'm amazed because I know it's really tricky to start a farm. Yes. But, you know, land is not it's, cheap. It's and expensive. Yeah. yeah, but there are some really um, interesting and, and unique products I'm finding that people are sort of drawn to the area and starting up really novel businesses, all, all kinds of things yeah. that you've never heard before, you know, goji berries and just yeah. different types of foods and, and products that I haven't seen anywhere else. So and it's kind of interesting. I, I've seen the marketing that welcome to Canada's new Provence, the yes. new pro province, yes. we have a new province of Provence, which <laughs> yes. is the, why go to, why go to France when yeah. you've got the Couch and Valley, right? It's very, very clever very marketing. Clever, yeah, yeah. And is that feeling, there's a kind of what I'm getting at here is a, it's a, it's a subtle undercurrent of, of agricultural delight, joy, sunshine, relaxation, food, just it's a rich, lush beauty, right? Yes, a terroir, right? A terroir. A terroir, that's, that's the that's word they use for grapes, For isn't grapes, it? Yes. but I feel like Couchin is really uh, developing a, yes. a taster or, or a, a And it's a not just the taste. land, it's the river coming down the middle, it's yeah. the, the languid summers. Is that getting more widely perceived, that uh, people feel it's that? I think so, and I think that's why what, when we decided to go into Victoria, we, we understand that um, not only is tourism really putting a lot of effort into yes. promoting the Provence idea, but we do feel that people are sort of catching on to the notion that Couchin is a really rich agricultural yeah. area with a really distinctive um, growing climate and, and like I said, yeah. products that you can't necessarily find yeah. elsewhere in Canada. I, I wish so. this, if this was a live show, I wish I could go to the audience and say, um, how many of you have seen the couch and farm map? Yeah. yeah. Which, because I've spread it out and it's got so many, oh my yeah. God, how many it's weekends amazing. I can spend visiting these farms and eating there and dining out there and doing this. It's an yeah. amazing yeah. Res resource for, not just for tourists, but for locals who want to explore the whole couch. And it's not just couch and valley, it's going right down Cobble Hill, right up towards north of Ladysmith. Yeah, you know, it's, yes. it's the CVRD boundary. So we go as you know, far south as uh, Shawnigan and Mill Bay and, yeah. and up to Yellow Point. So yeah. it's a really wide area. But yeah, you're right, people, we hear a lot of feedback about the map and often it's tourists who are coming to the area and yes. they say they use the map as their way of finding, you yeah, know, finding going little, off the- Buried the, treasures yeah, and secrets, you know. Gems, yeah, we're we're sure. going to certainly have, I think it's Deer Home Farm, which is it? Yeah. We yeah. saw that. We haven't had dinner there. We're going yeah, to. We're, we've got lovely. two friends, and we're going to go and have dinner Beautiful. there. And yeah, yeah. There's a summer ahead of us. Hopefully, that's going to be a, a sunny summer, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. So, Couch and Green, as an organisation, mm -hmm. that's pretty big now, isn't it? Yeah, we are quite big. Um, we have a, a large number of programmes, as yeah. evidenced by the video that uh, that you're yeah. showing. So and then jump into one of the other programmes. Yeah. So we do a wide range of food security related programmes. So you know, I work primarily on sort of the farm side of things, but there's lots of other programs related to skills, 
skill building through food. Um, yeah. We do a lot of cooking classes. Yeah. We're running two cooking classes right now, Chow Down and Food Fit, yeah. which are geared towards families um, and people who want to learn how to use local ingredients, but cook in a really economical and convenient way yeah. and um, gain some new skills that maybe they don't and have. And is, so. is some of the people there, people who were raised by parents who are both busy working and they got used to living on freezer food all the time and never actually learned yeah. the cooking skills in the kitchen? There's a mix, yeah. We have all kinds of people coming to these classes. I think, yeah, exactly. Some people who yeah. just simply didn't grow up with yeah. those skills. so they, they both parents working and there wasn't time yeah, to cook. Yeah, exactly. Um, others who uh, have big families and they're really busy and they need, they need some techniques into yeah. you know, how to cook economically, how to make something that's nutritious, Yes. Um, delicious and you know feeds a family of, of six or something like that yeah. so that we're getting is, all kinds. Do you do a community kitchen kind of thing? Well it's not so much a community kitchen but we do have a commercial kitchen and we use it um, quite a lot yeah. for those types of programs and we also have a lot of commercial renters who use our kitchen Because yeah, the community so. kitchen idea as I understand is people get together you know, 20 people, yeah. cook up seven days' worth of food, right. sit down and have a feast together and then take home a week's worth of food that they've cooked yeah. and yeah. really learn how you can save a lot of money that's right. By cooking wisely. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we don't, we, there's a, is a couch and community kitchens is actually another program in the valley. Okay. Um, the food, the cooking classes that we run are primarily more uh, skill building and educational. So yes, okay. some of the food does get taken home, but not necessarily yeah. a week's worth. But what about schools? Are you doing any work in schools? Yeah. So we have uh, at the Kin Park Youth Urban Farm, we do a lot of work there with schools. We have kids that come in and help us uh, grow, you know, plant and weed and um, harvest, and then we run a kids camp as well for the summer. So we have oh, wow. oodles of kids that come through the park. How long is the camp for? It runs July and August, so it's a, it's, it's a week it's long a week, thing. Yeah, weekly camp that uh, repeats, and of course the focus is on farming and food yeah. security. So the kids come to the park, they help us garden, they you know do recycled crafts, and then we bring them over to the kitchen twice a week, and they make things like pickles and. Uh, wow. Yeah, pesto, and they eat zucchini noodles, things that... Um, I read this yeah, statistic fun. from America recently that 7% of American people, adults, people, which is like 12 million people, think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Right. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, but it's surprising how uh, that sort yes. of so that food literacy piece. So is some of the children there. coming in—is it the first time they've actually had a worm in their hands and yeah. got into the soil and understood where food comes from? Absolutely, it's a real mix. I mean, some of the kids are really savvy and they have gardens at home and they're really attuned to what's happening. But others, yes, it's the very first time yeah. uh, harvesting a tomato. They they didn't know that you know tomatoes grew in the grew yeah. on a plant or so. Yeah, we every every t every day at camp we discover. Um, something new about someone in terms and of what have, their knowledge is. Do you have people who've maybe grown up on shop-bought tomatoes which taste like sort of cardboard and they get yeah. to taste that first locally grown organic yeah. one which explodes exactly. in your mouth, and right? It's warm in the oh sun my and, god, yeah. it's so tasty, yeah. right? Yeah, we had a lot of fun actually making the pickles with the kids and we um, we decided instead of canning, we just do refrigerated pickles last year because it was a little messy, you know, okay. with the boiling water and everything yes. with the kids in the kitchen. And we the kids we said, don't open your jars for at least a week. Let them let the, the flavors yes. pickle. And yes. uh, but they were coming back, and we were saying they were like, they, that was the most delicious thing I ever tasted. And they wanted to make more, and they wanted to pickle other things. So well, you know, I grew up in England neat. where there was a prejudice against garlic. Going back to the Napoleonic Wars, for all I know, from the French thing. <laughs> First time I started eating pickled garlic, which was like so sweet. Like so it, who needs chocolates or <laughs> you got pickled garlic? To, yeah. It's really delicious. It is. Yeah. 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 So that those are the the pieces that we love to see is you know the discovery of, of skills and taste that yeah. kids didn't have prior so wow. yeah so so what's some um, plans for the future for couch and green oh gosh well we just we just keep going we just you know we're really focused on um, we want to make sure that our region is really attuned to what it means to to grow locally eat seasonally um, and have the skills to be self-sufficient. I mean, ultimately, that's our goal, that we want to create resiliency in okay. the community. Because yeah. this, this, this shocking statistic that my wife, Caroline, keeps telling me that 95% of our food is coming in on the ferry in big yeah. trucks. Yeah, exactly. And that alone is pretty... And, and when you drive around the area, there's fields everywhere, but you look closely, a lot of them are just growing hay. That's right, yeah. Um, for the horsey people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, it, you know, it would, it, I always feel like it's a bit of a cliche when I say, you know, if the ferries were to stop and there was a natural disaster, we, we'd only have a couple days worth of food on Vancouver Island, but it's actually true. Yes. And, um, you know, there's about 8% of our food is grown here locally. So that's why we're really focused on encouraging people to, you know, uh, yeah. eat local, support local farms. We need a, a reason for farms to exist and for farmland to stay in, in production. Yeah. So. so 
the challenge that you, if I mean, we meet a lot of people in their late 20s, 30s who say I want to farm and then they look at the cost of farmland and here in Nanaimo there's a plan for a five acre farm to be under community ownership so that people can get engaged in that. Is there a similar, what, what, what kind of community farming is there in the Couch and Well, we've got, um, just one of our projects as an example, it's, it's our incubator seed farm. And yes. so the, the goal of that project is to- where, where is that? That's right in downtown Duncan, okay. essentially. Yeah, just, uh, well, North Couchin, um, yeah. just 10 minutes away from Couch and Green yes. Community on Beverly Street. And the goal there is to train young uh, or emerging farmers in seed production, okay. because of course seed production is a huge facet yeah. of food production, right? Yes. Without the seeds, you can't, yes. you don't have the food. Um, so it's not so much a community farm like you're describing, but it is a, an incubator farm for training right. and, yes. um, and, you know, yeah. fostering that knowledge and transferring yeah. that knowledge to, to young farmers so that we can yeah. see it does, continue. Does, does either Duncan or the CVRD own farmland that could be turned over? Um, I suspect they do, yeah. I think that there's a, I think there's a lot of land that could be, you know, ripe yeah. for that kind of application and certainly. Because if, if the, 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 yeah. I, I deal a lot with the affordable housing crisis and one of the, the land issue comes up there as well. And if land can be taken off the market forever and put into a community land trust yes. yeah. or a farmland trust, so the land is forever off the market. But people, if they're cultivating a piece of land within it mm -hmm. and putting value into it and worth into it, yeah. they could actually sell that to other people or move on because they're investing in it. That's right. And so they have a sense of ownership and their kids can inherit it, but actually the land yeah. is forever owned off the market and not going to be price inflated yes. or used by speculators just as a way to earn more money, right? Yeah, I think it's a fabulous idea and that's something definitely that Couch and Green Community yeah. encourages. We, yeah, yeah, we want to see Do you have members? Is that how it works? We do have members um, and we have a lot of volunteers and yeah. of course, yeah, really dedicated staff and that we just, yeah, keep ticking along. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what's the big buzz at the moment of sort of... of uh, Project-wise? Uh, yes, project-wise. Oh gosh, yeah. I, I feel like every, every day there's something new that's happening. Um, I would say that you know right now we've got um, with our two cooking classes running they're, they're they've been hugely popular. Yeah. We also run another um, really popular program is the Farmers Market Coupon Program. Right. We are the recipient of the the BC Farmers Market Association program, and we're the we we in partnership with the Duncan Farmers yes. Market run this program where we give um, an opportunity for people in our community to get a fifteen dollar voucher every week to spend at the farmers market. So who who gets who can qualify to get the vouchers? Uh, pretty much anyone. We don't really. I mean, it, the program is sort of ideally suited for someone who may be low income or yes. have face barriers um, to getting access to fresh food. Yeah. But we don't really vet uh, people who come. We just say, you know, come and apply. We do have a wait okay. list now because we're full. There's only I think yeah. 75 spots or so. Um, but it is open to anyone. We we figure that if someone feels that they want to come to us and, and apply. We're, we're, our doors are open. So, so. It's, an, it's on the honor system, really? It's on the honor system, right. yeah. We don't discourage or, or turn anyone away if they... We were just at the Beban um, market now and people yeah. were coming up with the coupons. With the coupons, yeah. Great. Similar coupons, which we then get cashed in and sent back into the system. That's right. That's so right. to me, that's a, a variation from the food bank principle. In, when yes, you're getting yeah. fresh, locally grown food yeah. into people's yeah. you know, stomachs. Exactly. <laughs> and I think for a lot of the people that use that program, um, it's their first time going to a farmer's market, sadly. I mean, in some ways, it's, it's yeah. kind of shocking that they've yes. never been. But that's the whole point is that we're getting a whole new demographic going yes. and, you know, tasting what, you know, fresh and local tastes like. Um, and so yeah. not only are they getting the nutritional benefits of yes. that local food, but... So I know there's the downtown it. farmer's market in Duncan. Are there other farmer's markets in the CVRD? Um, there are. There's a um, Cobble the Hill one, one Shemanus, I believe. Yeah. Um, there's the Cedar Market, of course. Yes. And yes. Yeah, so there, a few have come and gone over the last few years. Um, Duncan Farmer's Market just seems to keep yeah. sort of exploding. It's probably bursting at, at its seams now. Yeah. But um, Well, Dun the Duncan Market, because they go through the winter. That's right. And that's yeah. like, it's cold and you're standing yeah. there and the wind is blowing. So they're real heroic. <laughs> Yeah, heroic yeah. on the market s side of things. For sure, yeah. Do the, do the farmers feel that um, they're doing okay financially? Or are there some of them struggling? Or how I, does it work? I would say it's still, um, farming isn't still the most viable career. A lot of people have to have jobs, other jobs off yeah. farm to make it worth it. A lot of yes. people, it's a lifestyle choice rather than, yeah. you know, um, earning lots of money. But um, I think it, it the, the possibility is there to see farming really thrive in our region, especially with all these, you know, with tourism really promoting it and, and things like the cow op allowing farmers to go to market but within a really convenient yes. way. I think that yeah. 
we are going to see the tides change and it's going to really build and become and more viable. Is it right across the age range from younger people through to older people? The, the farmers. The farmers. the farmers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. a lot of uh, age, a lot of new and young farmers actually. And that's what I think when I do the map every year, I'm really surprised at all the new yeah. farms that I see come on there every year. Well, I can certainly see, I mean, friends of ours in the, in the Yellow Point area selling their blueberry farm and to someone from North Vancouver who can sell an apartment for, right. you know, a million and a half yeah. and then buy a farm for much less. and make it work that way because of the yeah. stupidity and craziness of the property market. That's right. But it's, it's, um, yeah. it is a challenge for younger people otherwise to find ways to get on the land. Because you, you, you need to live on the land where you're farming. You can't you commute do. to farmland. You you know. Yeah, and I think, I mean, there's, I think, as you know, there's lots of creative solutions that are happening. Yes. I'm, we're starting to see some really interesting um, land lease arrangements and that kind of thing. I know yeah. a couple farmers who are um, renting right now on the land that they live on and with a goal of, of actually owning that eventually. So they have some sort of relationship with the current owner and okay. the owner understands that, you know, eventually the goal is to transfer it to them. Yes. Um, perhaps maybe not at full market value, but How there are the farmers connecting? What method do they have to sort of be in touch with each lot, other? Well, I think a lot of the farmers, there's a lot of um, farmers institutes and there's the Couch and Agricultural Society. There's right. a lot of groups that still meet very regularly that are very strong. Yeah. Um, our co-op is designed to provide a, a, a forum for people to, to gather and get yeah. together and, and discuss communal issues. And of course, I think going to the Duncan Farmers Market, I know all the farmers that go there are very tight. They, they have, it's like a, but they're a also busy on their booth all the time. They can't they actually. They are, they are. But there's a yes. real sense of community, I think, amongst, you know, those who go yeah. to market. And uh, so that's nice to see. Yeah. yeah. Because like, it, we're caught in this very strange situation of knowing that we got this climate crisis coming that could wipe out all the food production from California because that's of right. the Sierra Nevada snow disappearing and yeah. drought in the south, needing much more food, yeah. importing 95% of our food. Yeah. So, and if it wasn't for this crazy thing of property prices, there'd be a lot more happening. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a bit of a precarious it, situation. It, it's almost it's, like it needs all so levels ways. of government to work together on this. Yeah. It's to, to guarantee protection of the agricultural land reserve, yeah. for one thing. But even then, because in really ALR land, I suppose if it's on a small acreage, it's selling for the price of the house and people treat it as a hobby farm. Right, that's right. Yeah, um, yeah. There's, a real, yeah there's a real issue there for sure. Because yeah. otherwise it shouldn't be inflating in price if they know it can't be developed. If, they, if there's a speculation thing, oh, we'll get rezoning. But if you yeah. know it can't ever be rezoned, it's always going to be agricultural. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. In theory, yes. Do you have, do you have, do, do in, in Couch and Green, do you discuss big policy changes or well, putting an input into the government on what you'd like to see happen? Yeah, I think it's always sort of at, at in the background of what we do. I mean, we're sort of in the trenches doing the, the real, like, yes. on the ground work with one-on-one with -on -one people, but um, absolutely, that is our ultimate goal, is to influence policy in terms yeah. of, you know, let's look at creative ways that we can keep land, agricultural land in production. Because uh, we're talking on the day before the new legislature in BC sits mm -hmm. with a throne speech by the Liberals tomorrow and you know it's possible that we're going to get this NDP Green Party alliance yeah. and it's possible it could last for more than three days <laughs> we, don't, we don't know at the moment okay, yeah. but if we had an NDP government backed by the Greens for two or three maybe four years are there things that we really want to change as we want them to put through I would think so I mean I think it I think that it's it's critical and that's so much of what motivates Couch and Green community is that we, we want to ensure that food production and farming has a future on yes. Vancouver Island because, yeah. like you said, once the, our supply dwindles from the south, yeah. we are really going to be looking inward and saying, well, okay, wait a minute, what can we do to, to yes. be more self-sufficient? And so if that framework or groundwork isn't there, yeah. it's, we're not going to have the capacity to produce enough yeah. food. So. And then there's the question of how do we get peop more people, because horticulture, needs more hands on the land than say dairy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of farms are zoned for one house and one ancillary house for a farm worker. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I meet young people who say, I want to live in a mini village. I want to, can we have a village of small homes right. on the land and all farm it together? Yeah, yeah. And so then we look into some creative rezoning for, but we have to find a way to make sure that you rezone for farming use only. And it's not a wedge in the door exactly. for ordinary realtors to come in and commute to, oh, I can look, I can live on a farm in Cowichan and commute to Victoria. That's right, exactly. And I, th I think that 
I, I think there are people within government who, who can see that. So it's just a matter of yeah. you know continuing to sort of apply that subtle pressure that you know this is really critical that we start to look at creative ways. I always say creative because I think that's what it's going to take. So yeah. how, creative housing solutions and creative land use solutions that really foster that more cooperative approach. Yes. So that we can get more people on the land in a more you know cost effective you know. Because uh, if I look back in history, way. in almost any country in the world, there are farm villages. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. where people are living in, a, in the, sharing the village and the farmlands yeah. all around them. Yeah. And out of the farm village comes a, a farm culture, and the children are uh, in a, the right. children are growing in a school immersed in farmland culture. Yeah, that's right. And you can feel the same rosiness of spirit that there is in the Provence feeling yes. of the Couch Valley in that yes. children growing up immersed in farmland. Yeah. Education around that and like. Oh, that's something that you want to be jealous for for your own <laughs> childhood going back. I wish I that's could great. have had that. Yeah. And here on the West Coast, we're really good at new ideas. Yeah. It's not quite so free on the East Coast. I've yeah. experienced that. Yeah. So we're the ones to pioneer new approaches to this stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice when there, are, there is that collective sort of awareness of, of the issue. Yes. And I think that's, you know, we really strive to bring those kinds of things yeah. to the forefront so that people are thinking that way. Does, does, does Couch and Green ever thought of doing a TEDx series? Like when you have, a, you know, the, the, the TED lectures, but TEDx oh. focused on people with, you know, the 10 minute or the 18 minute talk on yeah. bright ideas for the future of farming and food? That's a great idea. Yeah, I don't it, know that we've, that yeah. <laughs> that's been on our, our list, but we could add it to our to-do list. Because <laughs> I, I know from farmers I know that they're so busy working the land. They get to think mm. in January, December, December, January, then they're back to work. That's right. And yeah. yet there's big thinking needed. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a great idea. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and all the councillors need to be thinking of this stuff and aware of it all, right? Yeah. Well, look, I, I want to thank all of you in, in Couch and Green for the leadership you're giving thank down you. there. If anyone's in, watching this, we'll put your website up. What's the Couch and Green, the yeah. full website? Couch and Green Community dot org. Couch and Green Community dot org. Yeah. And then the particular website for the co-op. Yeah is cow-op.ca. We'll get both of those up. So the cow-op yeah. is if you want to order food for yourself through the, 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 the cow-op. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and look, look, thanks Heather for so Thank much for, for joining on Appreciate this stuff. Time. And I hope a lot of people get involved in your work. I hope so yeah. too.